Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and uh, in this video, I'll talk about uh, the quick change gearbox and installing it on this lathe. Now, be sure and watch the other eight or ten videos in this series on the Atlas lathe concerning uh, gears, changing gears, cutting a metric thread, cutting a standard thread, looking inside of the apron, and a few others. So, watch all uh, ten or twelve of these uh, as they uh, become available. But when I purchased this lathe, and you can look back in a video where, where it actually uh, show the purchase of this lathe and, and discuss it, it came with a quick change gearbox. It also came with all of the original gears and the equipment to convert it back to a standard uh, lathe uh, system. And that's what I did for the purposes of this video. But now that I'm done, I'm going to uh, put the quick change gearbox back on. I think I'll do a video of that, or I know I'm going to do a video of it. So you see how that's done, if that should ever uh, arise to where you need that. Uh, or you might find it of just of general interest. So here we go, and let me explain this gearbox before I put it on. Be sure and unplug the lathe when you work on the gears for safety's sake. There are about 1,000 possibilities with the change gears as far as different numbers of threads and feeds and metric gears or metric uh, threads and so on. So that's the big advantage to this. Plus it was by far cheaper, especially in those days, to buy the lathe set up like this. But many people did spend the extra at a later time after they became uh, disillusioned with the effort of changing the gears and I'll show you that uh, in the catalog, but there are, as I said, about a thousand possibilities here, but only 54 possibilities with the quick change gearbox. So that's one of the disadvantages of the quick change gearbox, but the big advantage is you can make those changes in a matter of seconds instead of 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever it takes to change these, plus the, the frustration and the mess with all of the grease. This is the model number of this lathe. If anybody knows what year it's built, uh, let me know in the comments, but I think it must have been the early 50s. Originally I thought it was the 40s. There is no printing date on, on this uh, instruction sheet here, so uh, I'm not sure of the date, but in looking at the Atlas the genuine Atlas catalog of 1950, they did not show a 12 inch lathe yet, they showed only a 10 inch, and this is a 12 inch. But this is the uh, manual that came with this originally, and it's uh, kind of brittle, and the mice have chewed on it, but it's still in pretty good shape and usable. And I took some still pictures of this I, that might uh, be helpful for you to look at, but this is the operating instructions and parts list for the quick change gearbox that fits these models and my model is the one that is uh, checked and the model number of the gearbox is right there and that's also shown on a tag on the uh, on the gearbox now when purchased it was not necessary to have a new lead screw but with some lays I think the Logan and the the, uh, the South Bend you had to buy a lead screw as well and I probably will do a video like this on my Logan lathe, which also came equipped similarly. But a new uh, gear guard was necessary, and this one is uh, cast iron. The other one on there is aluminum, and this is a two-piecer, and it came with a different pin. So that's the guard, and then the gearbox itself. Looks like that, and the uh, plate had to come off in order to install it because there's two cap screws that go here, and one of them gets covered. And looking at it from the side, we've got somewhat of a, a banjo here, but it's not exactly like we use on the other uh, <coughs> uh, gear change system. Excuse me. Looking at it from the bottom, if you have never looked into a gearbox, I think you can see why they are expensive. This one is in remarkable good condition. Obviously, the person that used this did not use an air gun to clean, his, to clean this lathe because there's no chips in there. And if you looked at my video 
about a Logan lathe where I work on the gearbox, it was just jammed with chips. And the chips get in there primarily from uh, using an air gun to clean. So I never uh, like to use an air gun, plus I just move the chips from one place in the shop to the other. And you can see that these tumblers slide back and forth so that this gear, or this gear rather, can uh, f uh, fit into different gears down here. And similarly here, when I loosen that tumbler up, this gear right here can uh, be put into, well, it's uh, a total of nine different gears. So this is an expensive uh, gearbox to manufacture. Another way that chips can get into this is some people let the chips pile up so high in their chip pan when they're doing a big job that the gears act, or the chips actually pile up high enough to where they get up into the gears. So keep your machine clean, but not with an air gun. Use a vacuum or a brush. So that's what the gearbox looks like. It looks like Sears went to a lot of trouble to make these manuals because it's very detailed here for the installation, but then again they were dealing with guys in the basements, probably not machinists, uh, amateurs that needed uh, complete instructions. So there it is step by step, but I'm going to take you through that in the video. And then in the next page of this manual is the operating instructions on how to to use the gearbox, and that was covered in my previous videos. And operating instructions continue on to this page, even with the charts. And on, on the back is the parts list with prices. I notice that all prices are subject to change without notice. I wonder if they've changed from these prices, where a gear was a dollar sixty, and then on the back, a beautiful exploded view of the entire gearbox. If you ever have to take it apart, and I've taken these apart, not on a atlas, but uh, it's it's not easy, and you need a little help with this. I like to look at exploded views for any machine parts or auto parts. I think it's just interesting to see how things are put together. And they call this the quadrant, not the banjo, so I'll try to use the correct term, quadrant. When I first started teaching, I had to explain to the kids that a quick change gearbox does not mean that you can speed shift it, because those were the days when kids still were driving uh, four speed and three speed floor shifts, and they liked to speed shift, so they thought at first that you could speed shift this, and I had to carefully explain that no. Quick change simply means that you can change it in a matter of 10 seconds instead of 10 minutes. Notice that uh, here's the original. Uh, tag with the model number. Perhaps I'm going into too much detail here, but the case itself is cast iron, but these tumbler levers are die cast as you can see and appear to be made of aluminum. And remember the gears are all Zamac gears. All of this over here is well built and is cast iron. This is the 1966 Sears Craftsman Tool Catalog, and that's just the year before I started teaching. And there is the Atlas lathe of that year, and that looks much more like the one that I have in the basement that is in other videos. And that was $650. That was an awful lot of money at the time. And that's without the motor. That was just almost out of the question for most people to buy that when uh, many people are still making just about 150 a week. But looking down at the bottom, there's the gearbox, and I'm not sure if that's the exact model, but there's the gearbox 
there's that uh, manual too for uh, two dollars and fifty nine cents but the gearbox is one hundred and twelve dollars a substantial sum here's my atlas metalworking machine tool catalog from 1950 and they had already been around at that time 40 years they got a decal on there or a sticker 40 years and then looking at the lathe section got several pages here but they're they do not show a 12 inch lathe they show a 10 inch lathe so that's why I believe that mine is uh, older than uh, or newer than 1950 must be mid 50s all kinds of parts but what I'm really wanting to show you here is the attachments and there it is remember Atlas made all the craftsman lathes and that quick change gearbox available in two sizes here was $75. I looked it up in the price sheet because the price sheet is still in here. Someplace right here is the price sheet from 1950. So that was very expensive even at the time and in 1950 most men probably didn't make $75 in a week. At long last, I'm getting to the business at hand, and I've, I'm afraid I'm becoming a bit verbose at times, but to start with, always unplug the machine. I know I've said that a hundred times, and there was a nut up here, and I'm going to take the guard off. And this guard, again, is aluminum. And the other one is cast iron. I, I know I said that already. Set that aside. And this guard here, which really protects you from the other side, at one time I said it was cast iron, but in fact it's aluminum. Take that off with two screws. You could leave it on, but it's more subject to being break, uh, broken because it's relatively fragile and thin. Set that off to the side. Now I'm going to move over to the other side. Next I'm going to remove these two cap screws and uh, remove the quadrant. And then I will have to loosen up these two screws down here, remove that uh, bearing, and the lead screw must be slid down just a couple inches to get it out of the way. When I do that, the entire lead screw, the weight of it, is going to be borne really by the carriage apron here, or possibly I could say the half nut. So if you think it's necessary, you could wire this up in a couple places so that there isn't any uh, possibility of damaging anything in here by the, by the weight of the teeter-totter effect of the lead screw. So let me take these out first. I'm going to uh, loosen this nut and drop the quadrant just a little bit so it's not meshing with any of the gears. Snug it up ever so lightly. I've already loosened that cap screw and I'll back this one off and it's just about ready to come off. It'll be supported by the end of the uh, lead screw at this time. Now this will pull right off as shown in other videos. Now I do not have this for sale. There's always somebody that says, hey, do you want to sell that? No, I don't want to sell it. But that will be in storage and I'm sure I will use it at another time. 